Is it live now? Could you, can someone check? Yeah, I will check. Yes, it's live now. Uh, okay. So, okay. We will start our like community buddy talks at episode two. Uh, our topic is the expectations and reality. Expectations versus reality of master student life. Uh, I'm gonna be the host, uh, and also uh, you already know that uh, I'm Mani Ustani Isadora. I'm founder of these organizations, and that I'm gonna be the host with DJ Yomi. So, uh, Yomi, could you please introduce yourself a little bit? Okay, hello everyone. My name is Yomi, and I'm a volunteer at Fuansi Butterfly International. And tonight, I will be a co-host with Sandy. Yes. Thank you, thank you, Yomi. What about Ari? Okay, thank you, thank you so much for the change. Hello, everyone. My name is Fahri, but you can call me Ari, and I am from the master's student, the second year of master's student in applied English studies at the King Mahmoud University of Technology from Bury, or people usually call KMUDP, and I am from the beautiful country Indonesia. Good to see you, everyone. Really nice to see you. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Ari. Okay, so what about uh, Akuso? Could you please introduce yourself? Hello, everyone. My name is Sodi Dantre. You can call me Saw. Yes, I'm in uh, the first years, Community University, Applied English Study, yeah, yes. I'm also a member of FBI, you guys, Fluency Butterfly <laughs> Okay. So this is the third time discussion about this topic. Yes, yeah, for me. Okay, nice to meet you, everyone. Yeah, so nice to meet you. Thank you so much for your introductions. I'm also like I'm also one of the students from Kimoko University of Technology Tombury, like my seniors and some of my friends. Today we're gonna go uh, KMU Today Buddy Talk uh, episode two, as I already mentioned that. Uh, since you guys heard about like our you know, topics that you guys might think like what we're gonna share, you know, above our activities or that what we're gonna do in the classroom or stuff like that. But today it's a little bit, you know, today's topic is a little bit similar to your guys' ideas. So uh, as I already mentioned in the introductions about our topic. So today I'm gonna ask the first question. So we are so excited to share our experience according to our topic. So the first question is, what will your initial expectations before studying and studying your master program in Thailand. Yeah, okay, so I think Ari first, right? Okay, Ari. Okay, thank you so much for the question. So speaking of expectation, yeah, I think it is not expectation, but it is more like my opinion or my picture about studying master's degree in Thailand or abroad, is that the first thing that comes to my mind is that the master's student, or not master's student, but master's degree is very hard and tough and very challenging. That's mm -hmm. the first thing that comes to my mind. And the second one is that master's degree will be very, you know, competitive. I mean, in terms of the environment, the competition between the student in the classroom and all that. And the third one is the teacher, mostly they are already, you know, old. Yeah, because, you know, especially university lecturers who are teaching masters and also PhD, mostly they are professor and mostly they are old. That's what's on my mind about being in mm -hmm. master's degree. Yeah. You just about like uh, being hard and uh, rigorous journeys above master like this, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so. Seems like great, but it's not really great. <laughs> okay, so thank you so much, Ari, for your answer. Okay, what about um, you and me? I also have a similar imagination like Ari because we are at the university level and also the master level. Mm -hmm. I always think that we can now have a close relationship with the teacher and between the students, and Maybe we may just focus too much on our education and we may not have enough time to have fun. That's mm. my first expectation, yes. Yeah, yes. I also used to think like that. Maybe I might not have like any fun time, but in reality, I also don't have fun time, not because of my university, because of my work. 
<laughs> nothing related to university so because of my work mm. but like as soon as i just choose the university as soon as i saw my seniors like you know but i really really like the university it's a compass light and also uh like this is the very impressions that which came into my mind uh, like master's degree like it's not the way i think like the way I used to think that I used to think like they all have really fun time, they are really welcome. So um yeah, my expectations is really hard, like uh like Ari and also Yumi, but in reality so I think it's once really well, you know, when I as soon as I just uh, join the orientations, yeah. Okay. So what about Agusa? What is your expectations for that one? You know, when it's come to master. Your initial expectation. Yes. yes. Uh, before I started joining here, I worked for one year in Thailand. At the time, yeah, I think I need to find an academic journey, you know. So uh, the field I'm interested in because I'm also interested in English language, right? So that I think if I join the master degree in the university in Thailand, and uh, I can have a network with my professionals. So uh, some kind of uh, yes, we, we can we can say kind of to encourage my career prospect something like that. Mm. Yeah, this is my expectation. Mm. Uh, but now I think maybe just like you mentioned a little bit, go out of the road <laughs> something like that. Okay, that's all. Yeah. Okay. So thank you so much for sharing so your experiences. Okay, what about the reality so right now? How like still far from your expectations when you actually encounter the student lights from your expectations oh okay how much um you find out like the like, uh, differences between them the two situations so what about ari yeah 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 so yeah the difference is very big i would say because you know in the first place i i think that being a master's student will, will be very challenging, will be very hard. But in reality, yes, being a master's student is tough. I know a lot of homework and stuff like that, but it is not that difficult actually because we have a lot of good friends. For example, if we don't understand anything, we can ask them and we have a very kind professor. So if we don't understand about the material, we can always ask. So yes, it is hard, but actually there is always a way to learn about that thing, yeah. And another thing is that, that I found really interesting is that it is very not competitive at all. Yes, it is competitive, but the environment is very healthy because, you know, in my bachelor degree in Indonesia, all the students are very competitive, you know, because they are always trying to be the number one student in the class. Yeah, they are a very high achiever, which is good, but, you know, it is very not good environment because we tend to ignore other people and I just want to be the winner. I just want to be the one. But in here, in master's degree, the situation is very different. We tend to work together. We support each other and we are not going to, you know, leave anyone left behind. So if mm -hmm. you don't understand, we can learn from each other. Yeah, that's the very interesting part. And yes, talking about the professor, Actually, they are very friendly. They are very young. I mean, they are very, you know, easygoing. So it is not like what I thought before I came to this university. So it's really fun, the reality, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, like we Asians people that like, used to think that professor, when it's come to professor, lecturers, like, you know, we're <laughs> supposed to be scared of like this. Mm. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, we yeah. yeah. Uh, actually, someone has come to reality. It's really different. That so they are really welcome and also it's really, really, you know, positive and nice environments that, that we have ever been. Right? Um, mm, yeah. Okay. You're right. Yeah. So thank you so much, Ari. So what about Yumi? Yeah. Back to the boy. According uh, about the professors, they are really warm and friendly, and they take care of not only our educational problem, but also they really care about our personal things as well. They, every day they ask our situation, our problem, if they can help something and they are really willing to help us and support us in, in every way that they can help us, right? And also for the classmates, yeah, they are not competitive as, at all. We support each other very much and we appreciate everyone afford when it comes to group work. Mm. Even if we make 
a small achievement. They are really, they give a really big congratulations. <laughs> so we support each other very much. This is the, the, the one of the things I just really might come up with my ad, admire because as soon as I, I just see that, you know, like my senior batch like this, like I, I got that sense like immediately. You, know, you guys have to describe like any words as now how, you know, um, familiar to our environment is, how one our environment is. Like we, we got that sense immediately as soon as we just see with you guys. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And maybe because also because of the class size, because during my bachelor degree, the class is around 50%. Oh, sorry. Yeah, 50 people in class. So yeah, we may have some different groups in class. But mm. here in master degree, we have only a few people. So we stick to each other so much. Wherever we go, we are in group. We, we never pet that in the first year. Ah, yes, it's like how, how many people they in senior batch? Like only six people? Six? At first, there were seven people, right? Yeah, there were seven. Seven people, but uh, one, one student dropped out after the first semester, and mm -hmm. another student is the man, and he joined another class, so he is not with us anymore. Mm. So now only so five of us. Ah, only five? Yeah, only yeah. five now. <laughs> okay, it is impossible like to, to be in different group because this is a group also. Yeah, <laughs> like, I know. But this is really, really nice. I mean like a small circle, right? And also yeah. you can you guys can even like, work together and suppose to get all the everything. So there is uh, you know, like any chances like, you know, which are gonna be different because I always say so which is yeah. really great. I really love that. <laughs> okay, so what about Agosa? Yes, yes, according yes. to okay. our seniors mention, and mm -hmm. I know that before I start the master degree here, I was expecting my classrooms maybe at least 20, plus, uh, 20 students in the master degree. But when I joined, I found only nine students, but now we have only eight students, one of the students drop out, right? And then uh, some uh, reality is that workload, you know, <laughs> workload is more intense than I expected. Yes, uh, we have a uh, sometimes we have a uh, later time, you know, uh, mm. deadline. We are, we are, we should be on time in time something like that. So that I think the level of independent studies and self motivation require a lot, right? Uh, mm. When compared to our bachelor degree. And then the teaching style, but the, the teaching style, I like, they didn't give the course books. They only made discussion, they hand in the second, uh, they hand in the knowledge. So we can search, we can study whatever we want. We have a resource center, like my library. So that is like a free, free to learn, free, free to discuss. Yes, it is kind of, uh, I, I haven't expected before. Yes, it's quite all good. They just giving us space, like you know, to go what we want, like you know, and also like, uh, never put the any limitations above uh our productivity. and like, what we gonna do it's about the course like this, right? Okay, thank you so much, I uh, I go sort of for your answer. So I think like uh, when I want to wrap up like about these two questions, I just found out that, um. This is our like how different our expectations are from the reality and also which is really great and like kind of like uh, priceless experience and that uh, after becoming some master's students in Thailand. So, okay, I, I really love that we all have uh, same opinions for this one. Okay, so and now I just want to hand over our <laughs> second host and uh, Yomi and uh, Yomi uh, to continue our sections. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so now let me ask you guys the third question. Uh, is there any challenge that you face that and you didn't expect? Are there any challenges? Okay, Ari, will you go first? <laughs> okay, okay, I'll, I'll go first, yeah. About a challenge, an expected challenge, yeah, I would say. Um, I think it is about the program itself because I'm coming from the English literature program in my bachelor, again my bachelor, and now I'm taking applied English studies, right? So I thought it's only about linguistic and stuff like that, but 
it turns out it is more than that, you know, because we have to concentration, we have English language teaching and, all, and also English for communication and stuff like that. So it's very broad. So English is very broad. So that's one thing because I need to learn something that I haven't learned before in my bachelor. I have to learn about the le learning theories, teaching theories, teaching pedagogy and stuff like that that I am not familiar before. So it is a bit challenging for me from English literature background because I'm not familiar at all about those. So yeah, that's one thing about the challenge. And another challenge is, is that about mental stability, I would say, you know, because we have to be mentally prepared before we enroll our master's degree because a lot of things can happen. For example, like financial problem and also a lot of assignment like so just mentioned before. And also, you know, we fell in love, we get heartbroken and stuff like that. And those kind of problems can, you know, lead to stress and it can affect our productivity in our study. So that can be the challenge as well, based on my experience. Yeah. Yes, yeah, I agree with the mental, our mental part, because, you know, when I was in Myanmar, I always used to live alone in my room. So I thought that I can live alone really well here also. <laughs> but as well, I miss, of course, I miss my home. Yeah, homesick, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> we didn't expect that. Yeah. I, I thought that I'm strong enough, but as well, I'm not. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree with you about that. Sometimes it can also affect our, you know, our, what is it called? Motivation. Yeah, for example, if we miss home, you know, my motivation is like very low at that time when I miss home, but I always try to, you know, phone call them, video call, and I think it helps a lot to cure that kind of homesickness and it weighs our motivation again. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, how about a goal solve? Uh, Ako, you are muted. Sorry, oh, I forgot it. Okay, uh, according to the previous uh, challenge, uh, yes, every year you mentioned, it. I found two big challenges for me. The first challenge is the academic environment. Yes, the environment. For, uh, yes, when, uh, when I came to the classrooms, I feel more challenged because they use, uh, they use a lot of, you know, technical events, you know. In the bachelor degree, I we haven't seen this kind of technical assistance, mm -hmm. right? So yeah, this is the first thing I can say environmental uh, environment. Yeah. And the second is the personal challenge. Yes. Uh, we are we are we are not we are not the same with the bachelor degree. So we have a lot of work. So we need to make a time management. Mm -hmm. So our personal and academic performance we need to balance, right? So. Uh, just like to careful, be careful of our health and be on time assignment. Yeah, something like that. Yes. Uh, the last thing is um, the, how to say that, the nourishment, you know, the nourishment, how to eat. You know, I found, and I didn't quote here so that I'm bored to eat. I found only time, time food is here. It's, it's sometimes difficult and just like you mentioned, yes, homesick. Remember, mm -hmm. just like, Remember Myanmar traditional food in my home because I didn't cook, but I always eat it time for you. This is quite challenge for me. Yes, that's all. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Sandy, would you like to share something? You are muted. <laughs> he doesn't know why he's playing game beside me. That's why I just told him, just turn on the voice. <laughs> <laughs> no way, include in the live session. So, yeah, it's just like I'm gonna say this is like financial for like this is really it's really expensive in here because like since we just um come from Myanmar, right? I really uh miss mm -hmm. Burmese food, Burmese food, but uh, I just want to say some things like about Mohinka, which is really mm -hmm. uh, popular food that in Myanmar. I like that. 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they cost a lot in here. <laughs> Maybe like uh, I think two hundred bucks, right? Around I don't know two hundred bucks. Around one hundred to one hundred fifty. I will do have one hundred and fifty. Okay, but for transportation stuff, you right? We have to yeah, transportation fee, <laughs> transportation fee and delivery fee. They are much more than the price itself. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's as much more than the food. So that's why you know before I eat, you know, uh, that a promise was I have to think. I have to think like you know, am I achieve? Uh, did I achieve like anything? <laughs> if not, so <laughs> I never eat like this. So this is the first thing. But for um homesick problems i don't have because i just uh, call my mom like to live with me and also i just have my cat <laughs> oh, <laughs> we, just call, we just call fufu so that like, i just uh, live with them together and that uh, i just call like you know every person that i love from my family here uh, especially my family is a really really like a uh, small family so i have to call my mom only so i don't have that kind of um problem homesick um but when he, uh, sorry, when she uh, went back to Myanmar for two months, uh, but yeah, I have like same experience like you guys, homesick <laughs> only two months. Even though it's really shameful that, you know, I, I'm mm -hmm. just, uh, have, I just mix my mom, like we just um. work for each other for only two months. <laughs> So it's really shameful that like to admit like this as a master student, but it's not real. <laughs> Okay, so this is the we're human. It's okay, we're human. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we we are the master student, but we are the baby at the at yeah. our foot. <laughs> yes, uh like like this. So but for the um academic um sector, so I don't have like that much uh, that much uh, like difficulties, uh, but it doesn't mean that uh, you know I can do everything like this if not like this because I'm just always busy with my job. I uh, I kind of like you know focus like completely uh like my friends uh, but i uh, try to come up with everything so as as much as i can so uh since um i don't have like too much expectations regarding this one so i just uh trying to uh, live my life uh, with the people uh sorry the people i love and also uh, some achievement that i, I can't uh, so that i by myself so that's why it's really okay and so i don't have any like you know, too much difficulties for that, apart from that thing, you know, living apart from my mom for two months. However, <laughs> I know. <laughs> Thanks for sharing, everyone. For me, for the academic problem, it's like, uh, my background is the literature like Ari, but I also have teaching experience. So for the course, well, I don't have any big problem, but I don't have any experience in research. So mm. when... At the beginning, I was really afraid to do a research. Mm -hmm. So I will say that that's my only problem there. But however, like I mentioned, the professors are really care about us. So mm -hmm. they teach us how to do it step by step. So now I become less scared compared to the previous semesters. And now I'm also doing a research. This is great. <laughs> Okay, now let's move to our next question. So we are, we also have challenges, right? So what are specific strategies or adjustments that you make to adapt those kind of problems? Okay, who want to share first? <laughs> Study from every cup. Oh, okay. Okay, Ari again. Okay. okay, so for the strategy, because as I mentioned earlier, Sometimes I have some difficulties in terms of, you know, some courses related to education because I don't have much experience in the field of education. So that's why I need to, you know, willing to learn about it. That's one thing, right? In order to catch up with all my classmates who already have some experience in the field of education. So yeah, willing to learn. That's one thing. And I don't... And if I don't understand anything about the courses or about some, you know, assignment, I should ask the professor and also my friends. And yes, they are willing to help me in order to, you know, understand and to finish the assignment. That's um, one of the strategy. And another thing is that because, you know, as we just talked about some mental issues, 
some mental problems, stuff like that before. So another strategy, strategy is that we have to talk to people if we have some problems, you know, don't keep it to yourself. Everyone, please don't keep it to yourself. So we have to talk to people if we have some problems. So for example, if we have some problems with the assignment, for example, if we cannot finish our assignment on time because of some, you know, some issues, we can always talk to our professor. We can always negotiate to our professor. If the reason is reasonable enough, they will allow us to extend the deadline. Yeah. And for example, if we have some mental issues, talk to our friends and also talk to the professionals because, you know, in our school, we have a psychologist and also psychiatrist, psych I don't know how to, yeah, psychiatrist, right? And in, in healthcare unit, right? And it's free. I mean, we can always, you know, book the, what is it, the meeting and we can talk to them about our problems and they will help us about what we are going through and it really helps and because i also attended the you know the program the counseling there so it helps me a lot when i got some problems or mental issues yeah maybe that's all for me yes i agree with you we cannot keep our problems alone so mm. sometimes we need to talk maybe with the professor or maybe with our friends or maybe someone we believe we have to talk our problems so that we can feel relief. Yeah. Okay, how about Sandy? Okay, so I think my method is not like a really girl, uh, a really good uh, compared to other people. I think it's like uh, I already mentioned that and then we are supposed to go uh, maybe some people that we love or maybe like to discuss that with like psychiatrists about our problems, right? How to tackle this mental um, issue uh, with some kind of like um, effective methods. But for me, I always ask my ask myself like lots of questions. Why did I happen like this? And also why did I happen like this? And though they, mm, is that a problem that I cannot tackle? Uh, I can't tackle. I always ask a lot of questions to myself because the more I find out the lots of uh, problems, I uh, the more a question that I try to ask myself, ask myself like to take off myself, like to know my my thoughts are pretty well. This is how I always handle my situations. And I also when I feel some negativity, and also if I got like some toxic stuff from other people, I just trying to put myself like under what pressure because if you have like too much more, you cannot think of those kind of toxic things at all. And so mm -hmm. um, at the end of the day, you will get some kind of achievements or work satisfaction so that will um, bring you some kind of like uh, a net confidence to beat up mm -hmm. like another level again like this. So this is how I treat myself like to overcome uh, some like uh, mental health and mental issues, uh, working too hard and also getting to satisfaction and that satisfaction is a bit of my confidence again, like to be a better person. So just digging out of myself more and more, I just ask question to myself, ask question mm -hmm. to myself. And then if, okay, what if it's happened, the things I don't want to be, like kind of very big things, they're very big problems that this is, it depends on our mind. If we think it's really big, it's actually big. It depends on our mind. If we think that it's really small, it's actually small. For example, like it depends on, uh, on you, like how much serious you are. Even though other people are like, talking about you, like, you know, uh, how much, you know, uh, how big that problem is, how big that problem is, but in your mind, you think it is small, it's actually small to you. Everything is based on your mind. If you think it is small, that's actually small for you. If you think it's really big, that's actually big for you. That's why and no matter how many people think of you, you're toxic or not toxic, like it really depends on your mind. Mm -hmm. This is like how I change my mindset to come up with, uh, like, um, how can I say, like, to deal with like, most of the problems in my life. When I always think this is serious, 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 this is going to be serious all the time. If I think this is nothing, for example, I like just we had some kind of anger issues. So let's say uh, we lost our like you know phone. Let's say this is a kind of like you know uh, a big problem for us. Like, but did that thing that situation like um, you know make your life uh, completely changes? No, 
Yeah, but anything. Now, this is kind of like temporary, like feelings, because like you know, you feel sentimental attachment to that fall, or maybe like you lost your money because you you have to spend like you know a small amount of money, a large amount of money to buy that phone again. So, but did they make you uh destroy, make your life destroy everything? No. If you think that is nothing, that is nothing. It depends on you. That's like this is how I change myself. Change myself. If you think it's really big, it's gonna be big, like this. Oh. So I always ask uh, lots of questions to myself. Like, um, if you think that is nothing, no one cannot tell you, because even yourself, like you think this is nothing. So that's why nobody can influence you. So this is how I tackle like most of the problems in my life. I think I'm a really stubborn person. I'm not sure. <laughs> I really like your mindset. Yeah. yeah, it's depends on you. If you think this is serious, okay. For example, like we just uh encountered some kind of heart breaking problem, right? Heart broken. So if you think this is life, you're gonna die because you think this is life. But just change your mind, okay? Just program right. It's just nothing. What if, okay? But we didn't, we didn't actually die in real life. We we are we just right? Just change mm. your mind like this. Nothing happen if you think this is small. This is gonna be small for you like this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just wanted to share. Okay, my answer is too loud. That's all. <laughs> okay, thanks for sharing. And how about Saul? You are muted. <laughs> okay. Again. Okay. So, uh, most of us adaptation. Yes, adaptation strategy you mentioned that almost there. Yes, I want to say there's four main points adaptation strategies. The first one is as a master degree student. Uh, yeah, I think to we need to develop effective time management, right? Yes, no, to be on time. Yes, again, I was again to be on time as I meant to be in time. Sometimes we have to meet each other, like just like group work workshops, right? And then I think. We, we need to be a sporting network, just like you already mentioned, peer sporting, right? We can find uh, sport from our professors, our friends, even psychiatry in our ACU, right? Yeah, the things we need to find, we need to have this. And then the third point is that we need to set a realistic goals, you know? Uh, yes, this in these characteristics, it need to be, yes. You know, for example, you have uh you you don't have a time management and you don't make a uh, time just like timetable tomorrow you need to uh just like admit the uh, submit assignment but you didn't finish anything so you, you think uh, tomorrow is okay <laughs> so it's kind of unrealistic right so you need to be realistic just like what should we do now what should we do next then so don't be more you are not superhero sometimes right so you can do more than you can. Yeah. Sometimes you cannot do more than you can. Yeah, that's why you need to be set realistic goals. And then the, the, the last point is there's health, health care, you know? Yes. Uh, I think you, we already have a teaching life, right? Uh, just like a part and job. Yeah, some uh, teaching life and the assignment life, the academic performance and meeting discussion. There's a lot of lot of something else. There are some students may have a sleeping and eating only these times, only those two kind of time managements, sleeping and eating, though they, they don't have anything about to care their care uh, they have. Uh, they eat whatever uh, whatever, they sleep whenever. So and this in the long time it can it can make a bad effect to our health. So that a balance, work life and health should be balanced. Yes. Yeah, we have That's to be balanced and we should know our limit. So we have to arrange, we have to manage our time very carefully. That's really important for my study with students' lives. Thank you for sharing, So, Okay, now it's time for our last question. So what advice would you like to give to the future master degree student? or the student who would like to pass through another master degree. So what advice would you like to give? Ari? Okay, so advice, yeah. Wow, what a big question. So based on my experience, the first advice would be 
go to master's degree with no expectation. No expectation, yeah. Go to master's degree with no expectation. Why? Because, you know, when we came to master's degree with a lot of expectation and, and you know, and if we didn't get the things that we have expected, we will, you know, we will feel, what is it, disappointed, right? So, yes. and then we will also only focus on something that we expected before. But when we came to master's degree with an expectation, it means that we are very, you know, very open to every opportunity that the universe will bring to us in the process of doing master's degree. Because believe me, in the process of doing master's degree, there are a lot of great opportunity that we will get in our life. Yeah, there are a lot. So if you don't have any expectation, we are, you know, very open to every great opportunity. That's the first advice I would say. And the second advice is that willing to learn new things because, you know, there is always a sky above the sky, you know, so never full, never never feel full enough about all the knowledge that we gain. So we have to be willing to learn. We can learn from anything, learn from our friends, learn from books, from learn from our professor. And also we can learn from the cleaning stuff in our faculty. Really, that that's that's very interesting because I also learned a lot of you know Thai phrases, Thai languages from the cleaning stuff in our school and that's good to help us learn this language, this Thai language. And last but not least is that it is very important for some people to get a high score, to have to get a high GPA, for example. I want to get GPA 4 and they are, you know, high achiever student. But it is very important to note that being a master student is not only about getting a high score and being good in academic, but it is also about how you expand your connection, expand your link for your future career, because it is very important for master's degree. So yeah, connection is very important, especially um, if we surround us, uh, surround ourselves with some people who have the same interests so that maybe, for example, they can help us about our career in the future. So yeah, that's very important, not only about the academics. Yeah, maybe that's all from me. Thank you for your advice. I think this will be really useful for the students who are interested to get a master's degree. Thank you, Ari. And how about Saul? What advice would you like to give? Yes, the advice, um... Harry mentioned is almost there, you know. He says, yes, we don't need to expect too much, right? Just go, right? Just go, just do it to be present, be present and face opportunities and then grab opportunities and willing to learn, right? Something like that, uh, this is Thailand, you know, this is the new environment for you. Just like Harry mentioned, we need to learn some kind of, a little about Thai language, yes? Yeah, and then the last part he mentioned that uh, not only GBAs, it's just for uh, MA students, right? we need to connect it. According to our connectivism, right? Connectivism theory, learning theory, everything is connected, right? So that we need to make our connect, expand our connections. Yes, we, uh, as for my advance, uh, advice, I want to say that uh, for the, the future master degree student, before you came here, be prepared and proactive, you know, uh, to be informative. Uh, what, what, which program do you want and which uh, financial support will you get from this school? That is the most important point. As for me, I didn't know anything about that. That's why I came here, no scholarship research, right? Okay, uh, the, the last point, uh, yes. The second point I want to say that, just like Eric mentioned, we need, uh, we need to embrace challenges, right? Uh, we need to open our mind to learn, uh, not only learning, but also some kind of sporty feedback, right? constructive feedback from our students, uh, from our uh, friends, teachers, professors. Yeah, sometimes when we 
make assignment. Yeah, we may have a weakness in uh, something critique and the result, something like that. So we need to open our mind their feedback, right? So uh, not only not only the classroom, but also the outside classroom because our school have a lot of program, just like the uh, going Japan. What what kind of program is there? Exchange program, yes. Exchange program, yes. Yes, and this the uh, the future, who uh, the master degree students, you they should prepare if they want to be go abroad. Yeah, they want to go abroad just like exchange program. Yes, come to KMU to university. You are welcome. Yeah, we have a exchange program, right? Uh, <clears throat> the next one is there, proactive. Yes, whatever in the classroom or outside the classroom, be active. Be at it. Don't be lazy. You know, this is a master degree. Just like every machine, you are in the sky. You know, so you need to fly. Just uh, just grab your wing, spread your wing, so that you can fly. Yeah, this. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, thank you for sharing. Yeah, we have to be open minded and also be prepared before we join the university. Thank you for sharing, so and Sandy. Yeah, actually, I have like lots of like ideas for the new students. New students means uh, who it's uh, who are really you know interested in applying uh, for that master programs. Uh, like I mean, every master program. So the first thing is that we just live in different countries with this one. We have to extend our NAGWA and also our I already mentioned that one, right? So just uh like extending our network and also building the relationship with the people who have same intention just really really great. I think, um, because like. Because of that, these people that who have the same intention, the same ideas that we can extend, right? Uh, looks of our opportunity and chances for us, which can be really helpful for our career. This is the one thing that I want to uh, give suggestions for the new students. And the second one, and I already mentioned that one, you know, on like academic, you know, record, like it's not that much important as you think, I mean, uh, right? Important as you, you think. And also, even though we have to learn like communications, are right? communications that in the since you just like put yourself like under the like uh depressions of like you know working too hard uh, but you don't have any like uh social life i think um that is not really good because i saw a lot of like contacts on facebook these days like uh, you can be good at iq but you know EQ just can carry you looks of things, right? Looks of opportunity because the people who are getting rich and who cards opportunity who are at the top right now, it's like compared to EQ and IQ, they are really good at EQ skate. That I totally agree with that one. And also another thing is be mature. Be mature means like and I think I'm also like I don't want to save myself. I'm a mature person, so I can also be childish in like some of the part because no one is perfect. They, uh, we want to accept that one, and then also master it. Like uh, you guys already mentioned that already like um, competitive, and also meeting with different people and different background. The most important thing is we have to be aware of that one. So we just come from different background. Never hesitate to put yourself in the place of different people instead of being judgmental and then um, like uh, critic. I mean like. Um, being critical to other people, just trying to uh, behave with them like uh, with sympathy and empathy. This is like one of the things I just want to mention because if your mental health is okay, you can do everything. This is how I value mental health. So if you are happy, if you are motivated, and then if you are really love like and my living in that small circle with a very positive environment, so you can achieve everything you want because your your mind is like totally drive you everything right our mind is controlled like everything's above our like if your mind it's healthy now if your mind is healthy if your mind is really good and then also if you are just living in a positive environment that like surrounded with and supported uh, support people like uh, people who are really supported you can achieve everything you want so that's why just trying to take care of your mental health this is the one thing i just want to sh share for the future students yes yeah that's real and to take care of our mental health. Thank you, Sandy, for sharing. Yeah, I agree with you all, and all of your advice are really great. And another thing is that, like, I think that Ari also mentioned that we should be willing to learn new things. For example, like for our batch, most of us like ELT, and we are friendly. We are familiar with ELT courses. So actually, we plan to choose ELT track 
But the things that we really chose is the communication cost, which is called international international communication. No, right. in the in the second semester. Ah. Uh -huh. Yeah. At that time, we have a choice to choose the elective. Mm -hmm. I think right now it's changed to seminar course. When, uh, during our time, we have to choose between ELT and communication. So we choose communication because that's totally new for us. Yes, that we, yes. all are, we all are ELT teacher, but we choose the communication because that's the new thing that we might be interested in. So also prepare and be willing to learn new things and find your interest and do whatever you enjoy. Mm. Yes, yes. And also you can even integrate some new skill that you have learned from the communications in your classrooms, right, you know? Yes. Which is really great. Yes. Yeah, really great. <laughs> yes. Okay, so this is all right. This is all of the questions that we have discussed in the section. So we really, really um, uh, appreciate that for our like you know guest speakers who joins our programs and like especially Ari right <laughs> since like we do the butterfly international so <laughs> so Ari is our guest speakers I really appreciate it so for your effort like to share your experiences like by joining this live sections so I just want to we just want to say thank you so much to you and then also I just want to ever um like announce some of our programs a little bit. Uh, for Zebra Fund International, I have programs every weekend. The first one is uh, General English Speaking Class, uh, which starts from 7.30 uh, p.m. to 9.30, but Pankow time, 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. So uh, for Saturday is General English Speaking Class, for Sunday is IATS Speaking Class. And also we always have like podcast sections, which is like hosted by uh, Teacher Dudu, which is another teacher, like, but for, that podcast session is every Friday, but our community buddy talk is like uh, on Saturday. But for Sunday, there is another scholarship sharing section, so other like kind of beneficial things are for you so who always watch our podcast sessions uh, with other professions from the different background or maybe from the same background, or maybe from ELTV. So this is all about our progress. And I just want to uh, announce uh, about Fluency Better Fund National and then never I forget to give your respects to volunteers who are giving their valuable time to the community. So, yeah, this is the one thing I just want to share. And thank you so much, kind of, for joining our sections. And then, okay, so this is the end of the session. Sessions, and thank you so much. So, is there anything that you like to say? Uh, I just want to say thank you so much for this opportunity. It is an honor for me, you know, to be here to share about our experiences in doing master's degree. And hopefully all the things that we have shared tonight is beneficial for the viewers so that maybe it can, you know, be uh, inspiration, not inspiration, but things that need to be considered for those who are planning to do a master's degree. Yeah, thank you so much. I'm so happy tonight. Thank you so much. Okay, what about uh, Yumi and also Agusa? Do you guys have anything to share? As a last yeah. First of all, I'm so honored to be the co-host today. Thank you for giving me the chance. And I you hope... gonna be the host. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 okay. <laughs> I hope everyone can get something from our talk today. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yes. So thank you, what about uh, Agusa? Uh, yes, I want to say everyone who uh, who was in this podcast, yeah, thank you for your watching and listening to our podcast. Yes, according to yeah, our seniors, Erin and you may have mentioned a lot. Yeah, and uh, yes, I already expect the audience we get a lot of information from them, ideas from them. Yes, if is someone any uh, watching this postcard want to join the master degree at community university yeah you can get the best information from them yes. yeah from Erin and Yumi Sandy yes you can get information whatever you want so yeah just wait to be uh, ready on watching this postcards if you want to join the master degree in Thailand yes that's all Yes. So thank you so much, Agusa and Yumi and Ari. And then like, uh, for the people who are listening to our podcast sessions, that we will see you guys are coming Saturday again. So thank you so much. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. 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 Yes.
okay